Welcome to the spring finale of Duck TV Sports. I'm Lena Bond. In tonight's episode, we'll be doing things a little differently here in studio. But first, we'll be recapping NCAA tournaments for both men's and women's diamond sports, then previewing the track and field NCAA championships. All that and more, starting right now. Welcome back, I'm Lena Bond. Now before we get to the action, let's see how the bats have been swinging for the women's and men's diamond sports. In spite of the Ducks winning its third straight Pac-12 championship and being one of the top three teams in the nation, the team was bounced out of the Women's College World Series tournament for the second straight year by the Alabama Crimson Tide. After previously losing to UCLA, Oregon lost its elimination game two to one in Oklahoma City, going two and out for the first time in team history. Moving on from Howe Field to PK Park, the third-seeded Ducks baseball team started off a little rocky with a 3-1 loss to the second-seeded Iowa Hawkeyes in its regional tournament. But then the team came back strong with a win over the fourth-seeded Canisius Golden Griffins 12-6 in an elimination game at the Springfield Regional in Missouri. Austin Grayback, Scott Heineman, and Mark Caraviotis combined for nine hits, nine runs, and five RBIs, allowing the Ducks to advance in the tournament. Now let's send it to Hayward Field, where Cale Newton and Aaron Dolan will discuss what to look forward to in the upcoming NCAA Track and Field Championships. Hi, I'm Cale Newton. And I'm Aaron Dolan. We're here at Hayward Field previewing the NCAA Championship meet for track and field, looking at both the men's and women's team races as well as some impact performers. First to the team race, Aaron, what do you think both the men's and women's team's chances are this year? Kale, I think that the men and women's both have a great shot at winning, but with the men's depth and the rankings continually going up, they're third right now, and I think that they will end up winning because they have so much depth in the distance. But for the women, they don't have as much depth in the distance, which is harder to score. So I think that they have a good shot at coming in the top three. Okay, so the men won last year behind a pretty incredible distance performance, and they've added a lot of talent since then. So you think that... Uh, as they have been all year, you think that the distance team is going to kind of be the key to the men's victory? Yes, I definitely think that the distance will be the key to the men's victory. They have, as I said before, so much depth. Edward Cheswick, for example, he will be probably doubling in some events and just as m many of the girls will be. So you mentioned Edward Cheswick. That segues pretty perfectly into uh, the next question I had. I, in terms of impact performers, I certainly would say Edward Cheswick and Eric Jenkins are going to be pretty huge for the Ducks on the men's side. Do the women have any big scorers that are going to make the difference in a top three performance? Yes, Kale. I believe Annie LeBlanc in the 1500 and 800 will come up huge. Also, Jenna Prandini, she does multiple events and they will be huge impacts for the women. Well, either way, the Ducks are certainly going to put up a tough fight. I think we can say that for sure. So for Aaron Dolan, I'm Kale Newton. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, guys. It's time for our annual hashtag game. Our analysts, Stephanie Lovell and Jonathan Style, will discuss a multitude of topics. But first, give me a hashtag that describes the overall play for the Lady Ducks in the Women's College World Series. I'm going to go with hashtag wake up. The Oregon Bats were sleeping in the two games they played. Now remember, this is a team that came in with the second highest batting average in the nation. Sheridan Hawkins is an elite pitcher. But if you want to be able to make it in the College World Series, then you need to provide run support. And the Ducks were just unable to do that. That's a good one, Jonathan, but I'm going to have to go with hashtag thorn in their side. This was the Lady Ducks' third time in the last four years advancing to the Women's College World Series. However, the team's luck was cut short yet again when Alabama's Crimson Tide beat them out for the second year in a row, thus ending their postseason. You know, both are good, but I'm going to have to agree with John. Wake up almost more like show up. In my opinion, these Lady Ducks left their bats and helmets in Eugene, Oregon. But we know this isn't the only diamond sport in postseason play. So can you guys give me a hashtag that describes how this men's basketball, um, excuse me, baseball team even made it to postseason? I'm going to go with hashtag miracle on grass. One month ago, it looked like this team had no chance on making the postseason. But after winning nine of their ten last regular season games to even get into the postseason, they were able to go ahead and do that. Great relief pitching by Steven Nagosek, Cooper Styles, and Garrett Clevenger were able to help them, help them seal close victories, allowing them to be the second to last team seeded in the field of 64 before losing twice to Iowa in the regionals. I'm going to have to go with hashtag staying alive. Throughout the season, the Ducks were always in the hunt for a playoff berth. 
but the team struggled to stay consistent until the final stretch of the season. The Ducks claimed their first Pac-12 Conference Series win with um, their conference game against Washington during early May, which set the team on pace for their next final six series matchups, including against Pac-12 leader UCLA. These crucial victories allowed the Ducks to make a strong push towards the postseason, which paid off considering the Ducks competed in the regional series tournament. Both are accurate, but once again, I'm going to have to go with John. I would use the word miracle as well to describe this Ducks baseball season. But from our best analyst to our best highlights, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the uh, top plays from this year's athletics. <laughs> guys, so it's probably safe to say that the University of Oregon is considered one of the most dominant schools in the nation when it comes to athletics. However, with football god Marcus Mariota taking his talents to Tennessee, do you see an opportunity for another sport to, you know, come up and like be the new fan favorite on this campus? Well, in my opinion, I believe Akron Tumbling is definitely going to be the best team on this University of Oregon campus next year. The team, although lost in the national championship meet this season, won their last four national titles. Throughout this year, the Ducks also signed 11 key players, and with their three most recent ones being Caitlin Hayes, Jennifer Maas, and Eugene local Nicole Sturio, could possibly be the strongest recruits this team has ever seen. All three are level 10 gymnasts, and I believe Caitlin Haynes will be this season's upcoming leader on the team. She has competed in the Junior Olympics for the last three years and placed second in the all-around this past year in 2014. With this outcome of this year's national championship meet and the incoming talent that's happening, I believe the Acro and Tumbling team will come out, have something to prove, and they definitely will not be able to be overlooked. Now, while Akron Tumbling is a strong choice, I'm going to go ahead and go with the Oregon softball team. This team won its third straight Pac-12 title and are poised to win their fourth next year. They're only losing Jamie Takeda on offense and Carissa Hogan gave their number two pitcher. But besides that, they're returning eight of their nine starters. The Ducks will return Sheridan Hawkins on the mound, who's been their ace for now three years. Um, if they want to return to the Women's College World Series once again, then Hawkins is going to be a big reason on why they do that. I actually have to agree with both of you. I think both teams will have a great season next season. But that is it for tonight's episode. Make sure to tune in during fall for coverage of all things Oregon Athletics. And before we leave you with some oh-so-humbling footage of our fantastic staff, on behalf of everyone, I would like to thank the graduating seniors for all their hard work and for making Duck TV Sports such an amazing experience for everyone here. We wish you all the best of luck moving forward with your endeavors. All right, now let's watch some bloopers. I don't know, I, like, I have it and then it just... <laughs> this win drops the Ducks record to 20 and 16. They have a rubber match Sunday against the bleh, where they look to win their first <laughs> of the bleh. It's not just pitching that's rolling for the Ducks. It's the bats. They're alive and they're well and they're racked up against the most second run. Are they racked up the most sec... I f that one up so bad, sorry. My bad. Find a wild moor in its natural habitat. Uh, yeah. I, I also want to know what I should do with my arm, my left arm. <laughs> At this point, I could do this in my sleepless rope. Probably just took my mic. Ducks and Bruins have a short turnaround for game three as it, the game of, the Ducks and Bruins. The Ducks are re currently ranked at number 64 in the RPI. 
I don't even say that. <laughs> Did you see her? <laughs> oh my god. I'm going to hell. <laughs> oh my god. Okay.